language is a means of communication. It communicates people, societies, cultures, states, and communities. But actually, it's much more than communication. As a social practice, it first of all reflects the reality we live in, and at the same time, constructs and creates the social reality. How does it do this? Well, it produces images, roles, norms, patterns, values, and then puts these all into practice, into circulation. And through circulation, it standardizes these messages, norms, values, and images, and then normalizes them. And the way we speak also reflects in our, our assumptions, stereotypes, including gender stereotypes, and also prejudice about the world we live in. In a sense, it's very important also to mention and understand that there are no neutral discourses. Every time we decide to choose, we decide to speak, we choose from this or that word, from a bunch of its synonyms, in order to convey the exact meaning and realize the exact actually connotations. So we choose from this or that word, from the cataloging of words, that or resources that are available to us. And also in this sense it's important to state that gender sensitivity becomes very important approach or even methodology to apply while using language, correct language, in other words, inclusive, gender inclusive and gender neutral language, trying to avoid sexist language and discriminative language. But the fact here is whether it's enough to use only gender sensitive language and focus only on one word, a single word, or we need to think widely and challenge the whole discourse, the situation. Well, I will tell you what. Um, during 1780s, the focus was on a single word. It was believed that if we change a word, we will be able to change the whole world. For example, in linguistics or in language use and practice, um, they have suggested to have the word miss, ms, instead of miss, m i w -S, s and missus, which will not show any more marital status of a woman and which will stand for equally for Mr. So in case because of Mr. we don't have marital status um, indicator, right? And in this sense, it was suggested just to change a single word. But later, this was a structuralist approach. Later in 90s, post-structuralist and discourse analysis have been developed as approach to study practically language. And in this sense, it became much more important not only to focus on a single word, but try to challenge the whole social practice processes and discourses. And in this sense, it's become important to study not a single word, but generally gender discourses that exist in our society. And why it's important to apply gender sensitivity uh, to language and the language use. Well, if we believe that language creates the reality, then we can change social, existing social practices through this very language if we try to use inclusive language and exact language and also challenge the existing um, gender inequalities and discriminations and stereotypes.